Okay. Uh, board members, everyone can hear me? Okay. Yes. Well, good evening and welcome to the Zoning Board of Appeals for the Town of East Chester, uh, May 11, 2021 meeting. Uh, usually at this time, I go over some of the ground rules and just very briefly, um, certain items that uh, we, we uh, conduct when we are meeting regularly in person will not be done tonight. Tonight's meeting will be done remotely. Uh, we don't know yet uh, whether June will be remote. It looks like it will be, but that will be announced in advance. Um, tonight's meeting will be conducted under Robert's Rules of Order, as they all are. And just, uh, for the, I guess, the cliff note uh, on that is that uh, generally um, the public uh, will be um, uh, allowed to speak uh, when recognized. And I want to go over that right now because uh, I want the public to understand how to participate. So if the public would like to make a comment at the public hearing portion of an application, you'll use the raise hand function uh, feature on your computer. If you're calling in from a phone, you'll use star nine. Our uh, Deputy Town Attorney Robert Tedisco will acknowledge you and invite you to speak. You'll, uh, you'll give your name and address for the record and uh, you'll have to um, unmute your microphone and then you'll be able to proceed. Uh, to, uh, as part of uh, um, some of the items that we don't are not able to do remotely, we're not able to uh, call the roll tonight. So I'll just let everyone know that we have two items on for resolution. We have three new business items and we have one application that has been adjourned uh, to possibly the June meeting, but this uh, has been adjourned for this evening. So um, having said that, uh, we will get right into the meeting and uh, the first item on for resolution, uh, I make a motion to approve application 21-07. This is 23 Clubway subject to the following two conditions. One, that the side yard setback to the proposed addition must be increased from eight feet to nine feet, whereas a 12 foot setback is required. And number two, prior to the issuance of a certificate of compliance, the applicant must install seven, eight and a half feet, a foot tall uh, green giant arborvitae or similar variety along the side property adjacent to the addition. Is there a second to my motion? I'll second. Mr. Kahalen. To the vote. Mr. Kahalen? Yes. Mr. Miller? Uh, Mr. Chairman, if you indulge me for one minute. Um, Please. Uh, I, as Margaret is well aware, I would have voted for this application with the eight foot setback and the arborvitaes puts me in kind of a precarious position. I'm not gonna penalize the applicant. Um, so I will vote uh, in favor of the motion for the approval as presented. Thank you, uh, Member Miller. Uh, Mr. Nerzia? Yes. Mr. DeMarco? Yes. I vote yes with uh, a similar comment to, uh, to Mr. Miller that uh, my approval for the application would have only required one condition and that is the arborvitae, uh, not to change of setback. So uh, that application has been approved five nothing, uh, five to zero, I'm sorry, with the two conditions. Okay, next item. Uh, I make a motion to approve application 22-1462 Vernon Drive. Is there a second to my motion? Second. Mr. Kahalen, to the vote. Mr. Kahalen? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mr. Nerzia? Yes. Mr. DeMarco? Yes. I vote yes. That application has been approved five to zero. Okay, now um, getting back to the ground rules on new business. So the three matters of new business that are on tonight, um, they've all been marked submitted. Your, your documents are part of a public record. They've been reviewed by the board. And in many instances, the board has uh, either been in the vicinity or been on premises. So just so the applicants understand procedurally, uh, you're not under an obligation to sit here and read your entire application or the five part test. Uh, I would ask that you, you know, just briefly summarize. You can read it if you want. It won't help or hurt your application. But again, the board is familiar um, with your application and procedurally you will give your presentation. The board has an opportunity to ask questions or comment and make comments. The public will be heard and then you'll have an opportunity to respond and the board will then have a final opportunity to ask questions or comments. So starting with new business item number one, this is to Pasadena Road. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. All right. uh, thanks again, Margaret and the board for the uh, scheduling accommodations. Very much appreciated. Um, 
So yes, uh, good evening. My name is Adamo Majorano from Community Designs and Engineering. On behalf of the applicant and owner, Cynthia Roberto, we are proposing a one-story addition over an existing non-conforming one-story uh, structure in the rear yard of 2 Pasadena Road, which is situated in R7.5 zoning district. I'm gonna share my screen. Okay, can you see that? Yes. Yes. Okay. So this project has been before you back in 2019. Um, for certain reasons, the applicant did not start the work, obviously with the COVID outbreak. And uh, we're back here today seeking uh, approval again for the same condition as we did present back in 2019. Nothing is uh, changing for the proposed action. Again, it's a uh, one-story addition over an existing one-story structure in the rear yard. The uh, setback that exists today is 14.5 feet in an R7.5 zoning district. Uh, rear yard setback is uh, 25 feet, which is required. So we are asking for the 14.5 foot um, zoning variance to increase that nonconformity because we're building up over that existing structure. Uh, again, this is to increase and make better use of the existing master bedroom. Uh, again, you know, increasing that bedroom closets and master bathroom. You can see here the dotted line is basically what exists today. Um, you can see here in the pictures as well. In the rear yard, there is very uh, heavy evergreen screening in the rear yard that sort of blocks it from the neighbors. The neighbor in the rear yard is very far away from, they have an oversized lot. So very far away from our proposed uh, dwelling and proposed condition. So the uh, screening and the distance, again, the same points as we brought up back in uh, the prior approval, uh, the same sort of conditions today and basically the same application and nothing really that is changing. We're just uh, back again, seeking approval again because the uh, certain amount of time has passed. And <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, and would, yes, that really pretty much does it for this. It would be too easy for me to, for me to say that your application has gone to the dogs, right? It would be too easy. Okay. So um, thank you for your presentation, um, Mr. Majorano. And I think this point now will allow the board to ask any questions or comments that they may have. Mr. Kahalen? None. Mr. Miller? Sorry, none. Mr. Nerzia? None. Mr. DeMarco? None. I don't have anything at this time. Uh, I make a motion to open the matter to the public for a public hearing. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Cahalan, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, Mr. Tedisco, is there anyone from the public that is interested in being heard on this application? I am checking now if there's, <clears throat> excuse me, if there's anyone from the public who wishes to be heard on this application or to address the board, please use the raise your hand feature and I will invite you to unmute yourself. Mr. Chairman, at this time, I don't see any members of the public who wish to address the board on this application. Okay, thank you. So I make a motion to close the public hearing on this application. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Cahalan, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Mr. Kahlen, anything on this application? No. Mr. Miller? No. Mr. Nerzia? No. Mr. DeMarco? No. All I uh, have to say for the application is that uh, you, the application in 2019 met the five-part test. The application now meets the five-part test. I see no other um, mitigating factors. So uh, I thank you for your application, Mr. Majorano, and I make a motion to adjourn this matter for resolution at the next meeting. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Kalen, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you, Mr. Majorano. Thank you again. Thank you for the time. Okay. Okay. New business item number two, 84 Lakeview Avenue, application 21-18. Good evening, members of the board. Oh, I'll pause and fix my video. Hi, good evening, members of the board. I want to say thank you so much for having me this evening. 
Thank you for your presentation. So you may proceed. I'm just sharing my screen now. Um, the, um, so this is for the application at 84 Lakeview Avenue. I'm Catherine Lavalbo, the architect presenting for applicants, Daniel Rosenberg and Katie Wilbur. Um, the Rosenbergs are proposing to renovate an existing garage to a family room. They, um, this will allow the applicant's father who is living with a disability due to a stroke to have a better level of accessibility to their home when he visits with his grandchildren. Uh, the modification will improve the quality of life for their family, but it requires the applicant to seek relief from this board on the R5 zone requirement for two parking spaces for single family homes. Uh, the driveway is capable of providing off street parking in a number of formats. It's, you're actually able to do two cars uh, in tandem and two cars side by side. However, in tandem, the parking space that would be closest to the street is actually within the town right of way. The driveway itself is just under 40 feet long, but of that 19 and a half feet are in the town right of way. And then if you put them side by side, they are smaller than the prescribed zoning regulations. Uh, this is why the applicant's seeking to have, uh, have the uh, resolution of variance to allow one parking space at Lakeview. Um, we took some photos of areas and uh, photos in the neighborhood. You can see that it's somewhat, this would be somewhat in keeping with what's occurring already in the neighborhood um, where there are cars parked, you know, relatively just off the driveway. Um, the, uh, this, so this, we think this will probably be continue to be in keeping with the neighborhood. Um, off street parking for cars will be safe and possible. So, so we're here to respectfully uh, request consideration from your board. Okay, well, thank you for your presentation. Uh, at this juncture, we'll have the uh, board ask any questions or make comments. Mr. Kahalen? I have none. Mr. Miller? None. Mr. Nerzia? None. Mr. DeMarco? Nothing. I have nothing at this time. I make a motion to open this matter uh, application to the public for public hearing. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Cahalan, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, Mr. Disco, is there anyone interested in being heard on this application? Uh, members of the public, if there is, are any, uh, any uh, attendees who wish to address the board on this application, please uh, use the raise your hand feature and I'll invite you to unmute yourself. At this time, Mr. Chairman, there does not appear to be any members of the public who wish to address the board on this application. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Tedisco. I make a motion to close the public hearing on this matter. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Cahalan, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Back to the board. Mr. Cahalan, any comments or questions? None. Mr. Miller? Still none. Mr. Nerzia? None. Mr. DeMarco? Nothing. And uh, I just have the comment that your presentation was clear and concise and you've, uh, from my purposes, adequately addressed the five part test. Uh, I make a motion to resolve this matter for resolution at the next meeting. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Cahalan, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thank you for your presentation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, last item on our calendar under new business and for the evening, is 21-13, this is for Sprague Road. Okay. Oh, just bear with me one minute. Okay, they're coming on. Hi, good evening, members of the board. Um, this is Thomas Haynes from Haynes Architecture. I hope you're all well tonight. Um, I am the architect of record for Mr. Thomas Messina with the project located at Four Sprague Road. Uh, Mr. Messina is on the Zoom currently and he will be uh, leading the presentation tonight and I'm happy to answer any questions that you all may have. Um, Margaret, is it possible to, 
to please um, give Tom, uh, Mr. Messina the floor to make a presentation. Sure, of course. He's been promoted, so he can he can just start when he's ready. Okay, great. Sorry, yeah, I don't see him here. So. Okay. <laughs> That's great. Oh, there he is. Okay, yeah. thank you. Thanks, Tom, and, and, and thanks, Margaret, and, th and thank you, board, for allowing me to present this important matter to you today. My name is Thomas Messina. I am uh, the homeowner at 4 Sprague Road, and I'm here today to request um, five variances. Let me see if I can try to share my screen here. Okay. I take it everyone can see this? Yes. yes. Okay, it's, great. It's visible. Okay, great. Uh, and just to give you a little background on myself, I, I, um, my wife and I have resided in East Chester since 2005 at uh, Four Spray Road. Prior to that, we were in, we were in Tuckahoe um, and we both grew up in West Chester, my wife in Yonkers, myself in Mount Vernon. Uh, we have two daughters, 13 and 10, that attend the, um, the public schools in, in East Chester. Um, but anyway, let me get to, this, uh, to, the, to, to the request here. Um, so I'm, I'm requesting five uh, variances. Uh, I, I trust you, you've all read through this. Uh, just, just quickly, two of the variances have to do with uh, um, a spa hot tub um, in my backyard, um, the rear and the side uh, setbacks. Um, two variances regarding um, a shed um, side setback and um, setback from my house. And the last variance, um, regarding in, impervious space, um, upping it from the 2765 square feet to 3,369 square feet. Um, I wanted to present to you today because um, I think it was a little over a year ago, uh, I was in front of you again um, asking for, for variances. Um, originally, my wife and I wanted to create a screened in um, porch in our backyard and to put in pavers to address some uh, water issues that we had. At that time in January of 2020, we asked for, for three variances. Uh, two of the variances had to do with the screen and porch. One of the variances had to do with uh, the impervious surface coverage. Um, the, in February of 2020, uh, the board um, approved the, the three variances. Um, my wife and I were, were, were all set to submit a permit to build the uh, screen and porch. However, this is now in you know April of 2020, and we were in the midst of, of COVID, and um, you know we were we were concerned that we may not be able to use our screen and porch uh, because it was connected to our house, and you know there's all sorts of uncertainties at the time, and so we decided just instead of um, putting in the screen and porch, just to convert our existing um, wooden deck to a trex deck. Um, we did um, continue to, uh, to, to put in the pavers. Um, originally, we had planned to put in uh, two dry wells um, as a condition of the approval by the board of the variance. Um, and, um, and that was, you know, um, uh, due to, you know, the amount of impervious space and, and the coverage of the, of the uh, screen and porch. Um, and even though we didn't um, um, build the screen and porch and we just converted our existing wooden deck to a Trex deck, we decided to keep those um, two uh, dry wells um, um, in the backyard. And we, we actually went in and, and included a third one. And we did this um, for a number of reasons. I'm not a big fan of water and I know my neighbors aren't either. And so we wanted to be really sure that we wouldn't have a water issue in the backyard. So uh, we have those three dry wells in today. Two of them are operational. One of them um, could be made operational if need be. Um, but anyway, my, you know, we were going through the, the, the build phase. Uh, you know, there was all sorts of delays due to COVID, but sometime in mid-June, our contractor began. Um, it was during this whole process, my wife and I were going back and forth. We really didn't know what we wanted to do at this point. Um, you know, there was issues with Lake Isle. Um, I mean, I we were all went through, we didn't know what the future was going to hold. And so, you know, unbeknownst to my wife and I around the variances and, and the permit requirements around a shed and a, and a hot tub, we, we had that installed. Um, and, um, you know, we are here 
today to, to, to address that. Um, I wanted to, to take the, uh, the board through just quickly, um, just a, a couple of uh, slides. Um, so what I have here is sort of the way that the layout is, um, again, I tried to do this, as, I did this myself. This is as close to, to sort of scale as possible. Um, but the idea is that in the corner on the left here, we have the spawn, the shed. Um, if I were to, to legalize it without the variances, I would have to move the spa 10 feet um, from the house and also 10 feet from the property line. I do have enough room for it. And I'd also have to move offset the shed 10, at least 10 feet from the house as well as um, five feet from the property lines. And so we get this sort of weird arrangement here, which I think is suboptimal to not only myself, but to my neighbors and I'll explain. Um, if I were to have to move my spa here to have to um, remove that uh, one dry well that we have in reserve in the event there's wa uh, any water issues um, that we may experience in the future um, because we'd have to put in a concrete slab, which is, you know, I don't, I don't think optimal for anyone. In addition, by moving everything to the center line, uh, what was sort of hidden from view on the side um, is now sort of in, in the sight line of, of all the neighbors. Um, again, something I think is suboptimal to everyone. And so what I wanted to do is I understand um, people have privacy uh, and visibility issues, aesthetic issues. Um, I don't want to hurt the property values of my house and nor do I want to do that of my neighbors. And so what I propose is to kind of pr improve the privacy um, of, the, of the backyard. Currently today, and I'm gonna go back to this slide, on the left and right, I have you know sort of these evergreens which obstruct view from the left and, and the right property line. What I propose is if the board uh, were to uh, approve the variances that I request, I would um, you know, install 11 fully grown evergreen trees at least 16 feet high, which I believe would, have, would improve the privacy, not only for my family, but also for the uh, family uh, to the rear of my property. Um, and so, um, on that note, um, I, 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 I pass it back to, to the board for any questions you may have or, or the public for that matter. Okay, thank you for your presentation. At this time, I'll see if the board has any questions or comments. We'll start with uh, Mr. Kahalen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I have several. Um, I visited the site on Saturday and Sunday. Um, you know, I, I don't think COVID was the reason you did this. Um, that shed is just not safe where it's located. You can't get around it. The spa is right up against the fence. The gazebo, you know, we have this thing called the accessory structures. It's a hindrance to the neighbor. I don't see how the arborvitaes would help that much, you know, until they're about 14 feet in height. Um, you know, your argument as putting in the third well you don't need a concrete slab. The pavers would suffice to put the hot tub on, as far as I know. Mark, would that be correct? Yeah, Margaret. I'm sorry, what was the question? The hot tub. Does it need a slab? It could go right on the pavers, correct? I, I, I can't answer that question. I mean, it would, typically it's reviewed by our plan reviewer with regard to how, if it's properly installed and constructed. Okay. But uh, just, it's still, uh, again, it's solid. Tom, Mr. Kalen, if I may, uh, this is Tom. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I thought I had before, to. I, let me interrupt everyone before we have some cross talk. We're going to have a problem. Uh, Mr. Kahanlon, make your comment to, and, and then I'll allow the applicant after the board to reply. So just make some notes, Mr. Messini. Go ahead, Mr. Kahanlon. So, you know, right. every square foot has been, has been used with the pavers. And don't get me wrong, they look beautiful, but. Where's the green space? You have a small little front lawn that is your only green space in the whole town. Um, we don't have this, you know? This is just not what, what the town is about. You increased your square footage by another 68 square feet from the original approval. That's a lot of square footage, you know? It just is, and the dry wells are just a solution to the impervious surface. Really what, what you should be, what we want is grass. 
and the water to go away naturally. Um, you know, I think you've taken advantage and you're asking for forgiveness on a situation that was self-created. As far as the test goes, that last piece is terrible. There's no way around it. This wasn't self-created. Um, and I think you're imposing on, 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 on your neighbors on both sides. I mean, having gone back there, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like I said, it's beautiful, but you have a basketball net by the side of the steps that's there. I mean, you know, I mean, that's, that's something that, you know, I guess the kids play with, which is great, but the gazebo is huge. It's like another shelter back there. That's right up against the, the property line. And I'm sure, you know, that, that, that is there for your convenience and not, you didn't think about your neighbors because it's should be closer to your house. If you were concerned about the neighbors, same thing with the spa, the shed to me is a hazard because there's just no way around it. So that's my comments at this point, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Cahalan. Mr. Miller. No comments. Mr. Nerzia. Uh, just following up on Mr. Cahalan's comments. I mean, I guess my, my general concerns are, if the layout of this backyard were different or if that house to your rear, which is actually his side, was situated differently, I, I guess I'd be less concerned. But given that everything is just kind of like put in here very closely and very tightly, and I appreciate the fact that you offered uh, for, to put the plantings, but uh, my concerns are, again, just echoing Mr. Cahalan's. Thank you, Mr. Nerzia. Mr. DeMarco? No questions. Okay. And I, I think uh, the commentary seems to be um, surrounding also uh, the substantiality of the request and also uh, uh, the, the cumulative substantiality. But uh, I'm going to give the applicant an opportunity to reply to certain um, comments, and then uh, we'll move on to the public. So if the applicant would like to reply, please do so. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Chairman. And in, I, 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 thank you, um, board, board members, for, for your comments. Um, a, a couple of things, um, and you know, Thomas Haynes, my architect, can correct me if I'm wrong, but um, the 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 pavers could, is my understanding, uh, hold the weight of the spa. It's the dry well that's underneath that would have to be removed in order for the base to be uh, considered um, sound. Um, so that's sort of the concern there. Um, regarding the um, my proposal of the trees, they would be fully grown trees. And um, I would incur the expense uh, of those fully grown trees. I think many of you are probably aware that a 16 to 18 foot fully grown tree um, is quite expensive, um, but I would incur that cost to, to again, help uh, with the, some of the visibility uh, from, again, my rear um, neighbor. Um, and uh, nonetheless, um, um, if the, the variances aren't approved, you know, uh, the, the spa and the shed could legally still be in my backyard um, under uh, obviously some modified uh, arrangement of the spa and the shed. So I just think that um, again, this, um, the way that this setup is, is most beneficial to my neighbors and to myself. But I do again, recognize the board's concern and I do not try to you know, um, and, you know, minimize that in any way. Okay, thank you. I mean, so um, um, well, I'm sorry. Uh, hold board on. Members, um, may I may I please just add a couple of comments to this? this is Thomas Haynes from Haynes? Okay, sure, Mr. Haynes, go ahead. Okay, thank you so much. Um, so you, you know, I just wanted to point out a, a few things here. Um, again, you know, I, I I think it's important that we we understand and and really take into consideration the importance of. Mr. Messina's um, uh, uh, previous slide that showed the location of the spa and the shed if he were to be in compliance, right? So he had he had made this presentation here um, with his own PowerPoint. Um, and, and you can see in this, this slide here to the right that um, he's showing two alternate locations for the shed and the spa. Um, if Mr. Messina has proposed these in these locations, um, in my opinion, and I, and I think that the board would probably share this opinion, the, the locations of these, the shed and the spa, would be more, um, I guess, disruptive to the neighbor's views or obtrusive to the neighbor's views 
um, seeing that the shed, which has a higher uh, roof to it, would be immediately adjacent to the existing dwelling located behind it. Where Mr. Messina located his shed currently, it's nestled between the Trex deck and the left side property line where there's substantial screening between his, prop, his dwelling and the house or the property to the left-hand side. So the shed tucked in that location does not really affect the adjacent neighbors. Um, in addition, um, the spa location, uh, where it would be fully compliant if it was located in the center, he would have additional issues with safety, um, with uh, height requirements for pools and spas, where the spa in that location, although it would meet zoning code requirements, it would not meet building code requirements unless he had a much higher uh, railing around his Trex deck because one could, uh, in theory, a child or and what have you, could hop off of the Trex deck into the spa. So that becomes a safety hazard. It's also in that location would be more in line with the rear property, which would be viewing right down into the spa. Um, I think that the screening that Mr. Messina proposes along the rear would be a substantial improvement um, in uh, creating green space and providing uh, screening between the adjacent dwelling and the property of the subject now. Um, and then lastly, I just wanted to point out that, that the proposed gazebo, uh, which is, is existing in that location, um, does not need variances or is, it is fully compliant with uh, zoning requirements. So whether the fact that Mr. Messina chose to put his gazebo in that location or closer to his home, he's fully compliant. So it's a moot point to even discuss the gazebo at this point. Um, if that's something that I think the neighbors um, disapprove of, and again, I'm not putting words in their mouth, I don't know that they do, um, but I know that Mr. Cahalan had, had brought that to the board's attention and to the public's attention. Um, again, I feel that that's a moot point because it's, it, it's fully compliant here. We're not asking for a variance on the gazebo. Um, so with those points said, um, you know, I, I understand that we're, we're asking for a minimal increase of impervious area to what was formally approved. Uh, essentially, we're asking for an increase of essentially the shed size. Um, Mr. Mesita is entitled to have a shed. He's entitled to have a spa. He's entitled to have a gazebo. Uh, so at this point, I, I would really request that the board uh, give consideration to these points and understand that, you know, had he moved these um, items into locations that were fully compliant, uh, you know, I, I, I personally feel that, they, that the adjacent property immediately behind them would not be happy with those locations, even though they were fully compliant. Okay, thank you for your reply. And just as a point of order, uh, one moment, please. As a point of order, I just want to make a note that the gazebo is not before us and it is, it is not an issue at this time. Uh, who is requesting um, recognition? I'm sorry. Mr. Chairman, it's Mr. Cahalan. Mr. Cahalan, please proceed. So I, I, I'm not a botanist or a landscaper, but putting in full grown arborvitaes in that five foot space, will they even fit? The root base has got to be bigger than that. I mean, are they going to fit at that in that location? Honestly? Well, okay, so uh, okay, please. That's my first question. Okay, go my ahead. second question Proceed. is, we still have, the big, the, big, the big issue here is, you know, we're, we're being directed in a way they want us to see this application. Yes, they could have done this, but they chose not to. So now they're asking for additional variances, but let's not forget the big thing here is the impervious surface. That's a, a huge amount of impervious surface that they're asking for. You know, they chose to do the third well for their own benefit, which is great in their neighbors. But, you know, they could have put that stuff. And when they built the deck, to Mr. Hayes's argument, you could have, if you knew you were going to place it there, you would have put a higher railing if you had to. So, you know, those arguments to me don't hold water. So I want to stay focused on, you know, what they did is one thing. What they could have done was another thing. We're here because of what they did, not what they didn't do. And the underlying concern is the impervious surface. And yes, the the gazebo is not in question, but it's 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 there for the neighbors, whether it's in question or not. So well, I, I, would, I, I want to rest for a second, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Tedisco. I, I just there is currently a case pending for a lot of these improvements that were done without permits in court, um, and also it's the 
part of the issue is the gazebo required a permit that was not obtained and there are setback requirements for a structure back there whether it's part of this application or not at this point in time uh, I don't know why it wasn't included but there is a current violation for that uh, structure and it, it's it's more than just a covering my understanding and I've seen photographs is that it is uh, an enclosed uh, a full enclosure um, yes. that it uh, is uh, I'll, I'll, it's an please. illegal structure please. that is in violation of the setback requirements it's it's not it's, actually it's not in it, I'm sorry I was yeah. going to reply to that Mrs. Yuli if you'd like to please proceed yeah, the the um, the gazebo actually does meet the setback requirements and with regard to so Mr. Tedisco is correct in that it required a permit. So the violation in court with regard to the, the gazebo is with regard to the fact that the permit had not been obtained, but it actually does meet the, requ the setback requirements for accessory structures and the building department has zero discretion with regard to modifying those setbacks um, if they meet the, the zoning requirements. There might've been some misunderstanding initially, but the survey um, confirmed that the gazebo does meet the setback requirements. Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Yuli. Okay, so at this, more, at this point, I have, I'm making a motion to open this application to the public for a public hearing. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Kalen, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, Mr. Tedisco? Yes, there is a member of the public that wishes to address the board. Uh, it says, Peter, I'm going to invite you to unmute yourself. Hello? Yes. Can you hear me? Please identify yourself yes. with your name and address and address the board. Yes, my name is Peter Telesco. I live at 892 Post Road. I am the house behind the uh, Forest Prairie Road property. Um, I would like to thank everyone for allowing me the opportunity to speak. Um, I have a prepared statement because I'm not comfortable talking in public like this, especially not comfortable being put in a position where I have to um, defend my property, de defend my happiness, defend my wife's health. So this is a, it's, it's a, a touchy situation for me. I'm going to do the best I can to get through this. And then I do want to respond to some of the comments that were made by the property owner and by the architect. So I'll start with by saying last year, the homeowner submitted an application to you, which was approved with and variances were granted. The work done far exceeds that which was approved. It turns out we were deceived and I was not given a chance to voice my concerns. You now have before you an application to approve and legalize a project which, which was completed illegally without proper permits. The application includes a drawing which has nice straight lines on it, uh, small rectangular boxes depicting a roofed area, which is in fact a gazebo, a hot tub and a shed. It has small numbers with arrows added to it. They all look quite innocent on the drawing and you may be inclined to say it's not so bad. I think I'll vote to approve this. Um, I can give you another perspective. I've lived with this since last fall. I can tell you what a nuisance it is to my life. You can't use half of my house when that gazebo was in use between the fire pit and the cigar smoke, comes right into my windows. The, the roof vent in that gazebo is even with my bedroom window. You can't have a bedroom window open when that's in use. You can't have the other windows open when they're in the hot tub, which are right below two other rooms of my home. So I think it's unacceptable. Um, as you can see, this is a backyard to side yard situation, and it makes a world of difference. My side yard is seven feet wide. The plan also can't tell you how disruptive and potentially dangerous it is to me as a neighbor. The structures had been in full use last year, as I said, and I can tell you for a fact it is both. I can't open the windows on that side of my home while either structure is in use. I find it telling that the shed was placed next to their home, but the hot tub was placed as far away from their home as possible. I have been awakened on at least three different occasions, as late as 1140 p.m. all weeknights when the hot tub is being closed for the evening. The gazebo, as I said, has a fire pit in it, which makes it a 24 hour, seven day a week, 365 day social gathering room. To call it a roof structure or an accessory structure is just not accurate. This is a detached addition to their home. It's particularly disturbing to me since it is approximately 12 feet from my home and the roof vent is directly under a bedroom window. It has been used as a cigar lounge. The smoke and odors rise and exit through the roof vent and are in my home within seconds if the windows are open. My wife is asthmatic and I take this very seriously. This is a very dangerous situation. No one should have the right to make my home 
dangerous or toxic to my wife. I do have a question though. The approved application allowed for an enlarged and enclosed deck attached to the home. Why was it decided to cancel and build a gazebo instead? Now I heard your answer tonight, so it kind of was uh, answered to me, but I'm gonna ask the question again anyway. What I believe is it's absolutely because they don't want a fire pit or cigars close to their home. So let's put them far away from our home as possible. And, you know, tough baloney for me if that's where it ends up. So in closing, I implore you to consider these facts. The work was done illegally after permits were granted for a different scope of work. I also please consider the homeowner is not asking for variances to have the structures moved closer to his home than permitted. He did just the opposite. He placed the party venues as far away from his home as possible. And most importantly, these two party structures are closer to my home than to their own home. There's an old saying, it is easier to ask for forgiveness than to ask for permission. I certainly hope that is not true in this case. I would like to thank you all for your time and I would like to just address um, one, one thing they brought up. I was never gonna bring up COVID. Um, I, don't, I don't think um, to bring up COVID in, in a uh, trivial uh, situation is, is fair. COVID has devastated many, many people. I'm gonna tell you my issues with COVID. My issue with COVID is not, do I have a swimming pool that I can swim in? My issue with COVID is that um, since last year, when COVID began, my wife and I have lost 22 people to COVID. 22. You can't make that number up. It started on my birthday. A dear friend of mine passed away from COVID. You probably all know him, Glenn Bolito, uh, former town councilman in the town of East Chester. It started with that, and it ended on... Um, March 12th of this year, my wife's cousin, Father John Grinsel, passed away from COVID. Um, somehow, my laptop got locked out, so you're not able to see me. I wanted to provide you pictures of what my house looked like on the night of March 12th. The property at Four Sprague Road had an outdoor party. They had their backlights on. The side yard of my house was lit up like a movie set. Couldn't sleep. No way you could sleep in my house. My wife in her pajamas went outside and she took pictures of this. And I'm going to tell you, I wish I could show you the pictures now. I only wish that we were able to see them. I will email them to anybody that wants to see them. But I don't know who in their right mind would think this is appropriate to sit in their backyard illuminating the entire side of, of their neighbor's homes. I have a video of the fire pit burning with the embers coming out of the, the roof vent. I have that. I have audio of 11, 1056 at night. The conversations, if you want to call it that, coming out of that property. 1056 at night. As I said, COVID affected me just as much as, as them. I'm not worried about a pool. I'm worried about keeping my wife alive. You're going to now put her at risk of an asthma attack that I have to take her to the hospital during times of COVID? I have a friend of mine who went to the hospital during time of COVID. He wasn't feeling well. He never came home. He contracted COVID while he was there and he passed away. No one has the right to put my wife's life in jeopardy while she's sitting in her own room, in her own home. And I feel adamant about this and I feel terrible that this is what it's come to, but I just think there's been no consideration given to me as a homeowner. And I think there has to be some protection for me as a homeowner that states that you can't have a gazebo with a fire pit that you used to smoke whatever you're smoking in there closer to my home than to your own. And that, that to me is, is the telling, the telling statistic there. It's closer to my home than to theirs. And as far as, well, we'll put up Cypress now, you're only offering that now. Why? Because you got caught because you did all this work illegally now to try and rectify it. We'll put it up. Why didn't you do it when you were doing this work? If you were so concerned about the neighbors, and you don't want to move the hot tub because, well, then more people will see it. But it's okay that I have to see this entire setup from three rooms of my house, actually maybe four rooms of my, of my house. It's just not right. I am asking this board for your help. You're the only people that can help me. This is an inappropriate request. It's an inappropriate project. And I do need your help. And I thank you for your time. Thank you for your presentation, Mr. Telesco. Mr. Tedisco, is there anyone else from the public that would like to be heard? One second, I'm checking. 
Um, at this time, if there is anyone who would like to address the board, please raise your hand. Mr. Chairman, at this time, I don't see any uh, hands raised indicating any members of the public that wish to address the board on this application. Okay. Uh, seeing no one further, I make a motion to close the public hearing on this application. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Cahalan, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Back to the board. Mr. Cahalan, any further commentary? Any questions? I, I mean, I just think that, you know, to legalize this, they should move the structures and get them, get them the right setbacks. And I still have a problem with the impervious surface. That is, you know, one of the serious variances. They were given a lot of latitude with the previous one. To take 68 square feet more to me is just being not fair. Um, you know, uh, uh, and, and I failed to mention, I mean, they have a retaining wall back there that's four feet. With a ten foot, with another six foot fence on top of it, so you're basically looking at ten feet, and the neighbor has a ten foot set problem, uh, you know, screened in, and he's still complaining about privacy. So, you know, I, I think there's some validity to this for sure. Okay, Ms. Galen, thank you, Mr. Miller. Uh, no questions or comments. Okay, Mr. Nerzi, anything? Uh, actually, my only comment right now is that uh, for full disclosure. My father-in-law used to be a member of the East Chester Italian American uh, Club and uh, the neighbor to the rear, Mr. Telesco, was a member. And um, I had interacted with him prior to this uh, um, on a social setting on, on several occasions. So I just want to mention that, but that won't affect my ability to uh, deal with this impartially. Thank you, uh, Mr. Nerzia. Mr. DeMarco, do you have anything? No, thank you. Okay, and I don't have anything further than the comments were previously made. Uh, so I make a motion to adjourn. I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, may I say yes. just one, one last thing? Um, sure, go ahead, proceed. Yeah, I, I mean, and, and I, I really appreciate Ms. Uh, Peter's comments. Um, who is I, Peter? Uh, uh, who the, is Peter you're referring to? Oh, the I, I think the individual, my neighbor. Okay, well, because there's a board member named Peter Nerzia. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, but yeah, um, and, you know, a, a couple of things. I, I was not aware of this, that it was bothering this, this much. I, I, he never spoke to me about any of this and his concerns. I would, I would have certainly heard him out. Um, my first time getting aware of this was a notice from the inspector that said I exceeded my impervious um, surface allowance. And, you know, it's been, you know, a long time coming to get here um, and additional things have come out, but that's just because we were doing our due diligence. Um, again, I, I, I know that people think that I've gone about this, uh, you know, to potentially upset my neighbor maybe or um, whatever it may be, but that's not the intention. Regarding the, the, that l the lights on March 12th, I've had floodlights in the back um, that were center driven. And, you know, um, They've been there for 12 years. I haven't had comments. And maybe because we haven't used our backyard, it's never been an issue. But we were immediately notified by, by the inspector that it's a concern, it's in violation. And, you know, three days later, it was fixed. So, you know, that won't happen again. And I didn't even know it was an issue. Um, um, you know, I have cameras. They, they, went, they go off for 75 seconds. And um, I looked over the two multiple periods and they don't go off that often and maybe it was just that night and his, his wife wasn't feeling well um i, I don't know but um in in, in, in second um i again i the placement of the of the uh, the the structures were total they weren't based upon annoying my neighbor they were i mean if you look at it it just they just seem to fit the best in in that in that space um, and the, the fire pit is a, is a propane mobile thing. It doesn't have flares. If there's flares are coming from my cigars and, and, you know, I'm, everything's legal back there. It's, a, we, we, I smoke cigars. I probably smoke cigars once a week. I've had people there maybe three or four times that had cigars. It's, it's, you know, it, it's what you do, you know? Um, but 
I don't want to, to hurt his wife, um, but I also want to be able to enjoy the property that I have. And I haven't enjoyed it for 15 years. For 15 years, I couldn't use my backyard because it was a, it was a, it was a swimming pool. Okay. And hence the reason we have all those drains and the impervious service. And it was grass and it, you know, it didn't go anywhere. That grass, it was all grass. I have video, I've shared it with Margaret in the previous variants. It was, it, I mean, if you look at it, it's a, a serious, it's a swimming pool. And it, we haven't had any water. And I haven't heard Mr. Telesco who was here last time, um, who, who expressed his concern about water, say he has a water problem. So I went out of my way to address his earlier concern. And I, it would have been nice if he had come to me and had said something about some of the layouts of my backyard. And we could have talked about it. And I would have legalized it anyway. I wasn't even aware of it. But, you know, that's sort of where I stand with that. And, and again, I don't want to, I'm not here to upset my neighbor or I never intended to. I hadn't heard from my neighbor in 16 years, but I haven't also hadn't used my backyard either. So um, anyway, that's that's sort of my closing statement. Yeah, well, um, you could rest assured as you probably um, uh, determined from the last time that you your application will be judged. Uh, there's nothing is personal here. There's an old maxim this board goes by, and that is we review the application, not the applicant. So whatever is the uh, animus or dynamics between neighbors does not factor into our review of an application. So having said that, uh, I make a motion to adjourn this application for resolution at yeah, the next I, meeting. I just, wanted to, I just wanted to put something out there. I just noticed that uh, Mr. Uh, I guess Peter, uh, the neighbor's hand went up, uh, but the public hearing is now closed. So and it, and it will remain out. and will remain closed. So this is my third attempt at making a motion that under Robert's rules, I really should be able to make. So I'm going to make it again. I make a motion to adjourn this matter, uh, this application for resolution at the next meeting. Is there a second to my motion? Second. Mr. Miller, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay. So... Um, just as a note, the next meeting will be Tuesday, um, excuse me, uh, the June meeting will be Tuesday, uh, June 8th. I now make a motion to adjourn tonight's meeting. Is there a second to my motion? Second. Mr. Cahalan, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night.